People that are into personal improvement like to point out how some habits just improve all parts of your life. Exercise, for example. Okay, you get in the habit of exercising. Well, now you've got more energy, you feel better, you look better, or at least you think you do. But either way, you've got more confidence. Well, that helps you in everything you do. You've got more energy, you get more done, more confidence in yourself and your parents. That carries over in all parts of your life. Well, I think there's some skills that help improve all parts of your life. And being able to sharpen your knife is one of those skills. Think about it. A knife is probably the most universally used tool there is. Men, women use it in the kitchen, out in the garden, us hunters out in the field, fishermen filleting fish. We're constantly using knives. And there is nothing more aggravating than a dull knife that won't cut. So when you learn to sharpen a knife, your knives are sharp. You save time, you save money, and you do better work. Your cuts are more precise. So when you're filleting that salmon to go on the grill, you're not just mangling it up with some dull knife. When you're cutting up vegetables or just dicing an onion, a sharp knife, you get more precise cuts, you do it quicker. It's just everything's better with a sharp knife. And it saves you money because you don't get aggravated with all those dull knives, end up throwing them away every so often and just go buy a new set that's going to get dull you know, not too long after that. And on the time saving part, you're working more efficiently, but you're not spending all that time digging through the drawer trying to find that one sharp knife you have. <laughs> only to finally find it and realize it's dull too. <laughs> so there are a lot of benefits from having a sharp knife that you don't realize until you finally learn how to sharpen a knife and you keep your knives sharp. So today we're going to dive into the deep mystical art of knife sharpening. And honestly, you're going to be amazed at just how easy it is when you see how to do it. Before we get into the actual how-to, there's two concepts you need to understand, and as soon as you understand these, knife sharpening is going to start to make sense. The first concept is the angle of your bevel, and somewhere around 15 degrees is generally really good for a knife. Anywhere around that. Don't worry about the specifics. We'll talk more about that shortly. Okay, if you've got a stone, this is 90 degrees. This is zero. You want it right about 15 degrees. What happens when you're not at 15 degrees? And that's the main point of this. Don't worry about the specifics on the angle. If you are too steep, you're not as close to 90 degrees. Then you're just rounding over the tip. Your knife never gets sharp that way. If you're too shallow, for the existing bubble. Now you're just hitting this corner. Again, you never get to the tip. So if you've just sharpened and sharpened and sharpened away on a stone before, and your knife just never got sharp, this is one of the reasons for that. So when you're sharpening a knife on a stone, you want it flat on the bubble. The second concept you need to understand for knife sharpening is the burr. When you're sharpening a knife, steel, you're using an abrasive. Well, that abrasive creates a burr. It creates a very rough edge and a burr can get rolled over. That's not going to be sharp. And a good example is this piece of wood here. It's got a nice clean corner on it. And I've got this really rough rasp here. Well, when I go over this corner with this rasp, now it's really rough. I've got wood fibers everywhere. It's the same way with a knife. So, and then here's the issue. You've got different coarse or different grits that you can use to sharpen a knife with. You got rough, medium, fine, super fine. You need all of those. Because if you've got a really dull knife, you need to remove a lot of steel. And when I say a lot, 
Okay, this is all relative. Steel's pretty tough stuff. So if you're doing anything by hand to remove steel, it's generally not that easy to remove much steel. So if you've got a really dull knife, you've got to take it down and you've got to remove this steel to get rid of a really rough edge. You need a coarse stone for that. The problem with the coarse stone, it yet removes steel quickly, but then you get a rough surface, a burr, again, not very sharp. So now you want to go to a medium stone. And the medium stone, you're going to remove a little more steel, but not much. But you're going to get some of the roughness out. And it's not easy to get the roughness out. Again, steel's pretty tough stuff here. Okay, then finally, you, you need a really, really fine stone to put a good sharp edge on a knife. With those two concepts out of the way, now let's look at some of the devices and tools out there and why some kind of work sometimes and you know, don't really work well other times. <laughs> okay, to start with, you got you just a little cheap. You pull your knife through it, sharpener. We've all seen these at the store. It's got just a little V for your blade. There's two problems with this. First, you can't control the angle of your bevel. Wherever this is set at, that's, that's what you get. Well, there's advantages to being able to control the angle of the bevel on your blade. A really, really sharp slicing knife. You want a smaller bevel. A straight razor. A straight razor is less than 10 degrees. So something like a fillet knife that you're gonna be slicing fish. You might go through a few ribs, but you're not really hitting any you know, tough bone or anything. A fillet knife, you want somewhere around 12 degrees on your bevel. On the opposite extreme, a butcher's knife. When you pull out the butcher's knife in the kitchen, you're, you know, some kind of bone-in roast or some, you know, pretty tough stuff. Well, traditional butcher's knife, you want a wider bevel, something around 20 degrees. That makes the edge more durable, and it can handle hitting hard things such as bone and something like that. The same for, you know, a traditional hunting knife out in the field. If you're going to be hitting a lot of bone, <clears throat> then you want a wider angle, something around 20 degrees. If you're gonna do more skinning, then you want a smaller angle. Personally, I, I like around 15 degrees, maybe 17, somewhere in there. Don't get too hung up on the angles yet, though. Just realize there's advantages to being able to change the, the angle to what you want it. You can't change this angle. The other problem with this is the material in here. You, you don't know what they're using for a material. I've seen some that were carbide on the inside. The advantage to carbide is you remove a lot of steel quickly. The downside is you've got a rough edge when you get through. So it's not going to be as sharp as it could be, and it's at just whatever angle. I've seen some that had ceramic on the inside. The downside to ceramic is it's good for finishing. But as far as sharpening, it's not very good because if your knife's really dull, you're gonna be there forever. You're never gonna remove enough steel to actually get to the point. That's why these sometimes work, sometimes don't. That's why you get such mixed results. Now, if you just cannot get a stone, which I'm gonna show you how to use a, a stone here shortly, which is what I recommend, but if you just can't get a stone, you just can't get the angle right, it just, for whatever reason. I've seen some that have the V's already in it, but different coarseness. So you have fine, medium, and coarse for the grind. All right, this is what I would recommend if you just cannot figure out how to use a stone. You can't change the angle here, but even if you can't change the angle, at least it's gonna be sharp and that's better than nothing. <laughs> So you can, if your knife's really dull, you can start with the coarse and then go to the medium, then go to the fine, and you've got a nice sharp edge there. If your knife's already fairly sharp, you've been taking care of it, then it just needs a little touch up. You can go just medium and fine, or just fine, you know, 
depending on what you're doing. You can't set the angle, but hey, at least it's going to be a good sharp edge. Next we have, I've seen these, where they have different angles in the V's that you take your knife through. Okay, the downside to this is the same as this one. You can't control how coarse your grind is. You can get the angle right, but according to the material in here, you, you don't have any control there. So, you know, of these three, I, I would say this. And then there's all the various machines out there and different things. And if you're sharpening knives professionally, you, you want to make money sharpening knives for restaurants or something like that. Okay, I could see getting a machine just to make the whole process faster. But just for normal home use, I just don't think it's worth the expense. That's where your stones come in and learning how to use them. And we're going to get into that right now. Now, for my personal preference, stones. And you know, nothing new here. They've been used for a really long time. <laughs> and I've got diamond stones here. I think they're the best, but they're expensive. And I use these for woodworking. So you don't need to spend this much for stones just for knives. You can go with a traditional double-sided wet rock. I mean, these are great. You, you've got a coarse side, then you've got a fine side. And I would also recommend if you're going to do this, then you get what's called an Arkansas stone. It's even finer. So then you've got your coarse, medium, and fine grinds for sharpening your knife. And then you want to be able to finish your blade to, to really get that super sharp edge, a piece of leather. And I've got leather glued to a board again for woodworking, but you can use just a belt on a countertop. Leather is really coarse and it's really good at polishing a blade. That's why you could get a strop. That's why so many use strops for the straight razors for so long. That's how you get that really super sharp edge. You don't have to finish it with leather though. You can get a really good edge just from an Arkansas stone, any super fine stone. Piece of ceramic. They're really great for finishing a knife edge. Okay. The problem most people have with stones though, it takes a little practice to learn how to use it. And this goes back to the concepts, your burr and your angle. And the most difficult part for most people is getting the angle right. So I'm gonna show you how to do that really quick. And after a couple of times of using a stone, You'll never look back. For getting the angle on your stone, whatever kind of stone you're using. Okay, this is 90 degrees. This is zero. The easiest way is just take your knife, lay it on the side at zero, and then just roll it up and, and you'll actually feel the bevel. And I'm using this hunting knife because it's got a large bevel. It'll make it easier for me to show you the bevel on here. For a really thin knife, you might not be able to feel the bevel. So here, here's some other things you can do. A protractor. I've got this one set at 17 degrees. This is my hunting knife for out in the field. 17 degrees is about perfect. I can just lay the knife on the side on the protractor, come down. Right. That's my angle right there. And then all I have to do is just focus on maintaining that angle. That's it. And you'll develop a feel with your stone. After you do this a couple of times, as soon as you take that stone, the knife across the stone, you'll know if you're on the flat or not. So you'll know exactly where you're at. If you don't have a protractor close by, a piece of paper. Regular sheet of notebook paper. Your corner is 90 degrees. Fold it over, now your corner is 45. Fold it over again, and now your corner is 22 and a half. Right? That's not exactly where I want to be, but it'll get me really close. So again, just knife laying on its side. I can just slide it down until 
that's where I need to be, right there for 22 and a half. I know I want just a little bit shallower so I can rotate that knife just a little bit. And that's going to put me right back around that 17 degree mark. And if you have a knife that's already got a bubble, you're not really sure about what you're doing, take a Sharpie. And then just mark the bubble with the Sharpie. And when you take the knife across that stone, you will remove the edge with the Sharpie. So if you see the Sharpie still on the very tip, you know you're off a little bit. If it's just on the shoulder and not the tip, then you know you're a little bit too shallow. And you'll know exactly where you're at. You can adjust accordingly. And again, you, you will feel what's going on. Okay, and let, let's actually sharpen some blades here. For a wet rock, you actually need for it to be wet to work. And an oil stone, you would use oil. So that's just plain water. And you can go backwards. You can cut into the stone. It, it doesn't matter. I prefer to go backwards. Okay, so I want to find my angle. It's right about there. And now I'm just going to go backwards. And as I hit the curve, I'm just going to lift the edge. And you still want to maintain the fill through that curve. And that's it. Don't be in any hurry in this part. Just develop your own style. Just make sure you can feel where the knife blade's at. And if we look at our Sharpie, okay, I'm hitting on that shoulder just a little bit. I'm not quite getting to the tip. So I need to, I need to be just a little steeper on my angle. And I can feel that difference right there. go. Same thing on the other side. And you want to go equal number of motions across the stone. You want to keep it even. Now I'm going to my fine stone. And being this is my hunting knife, it's already pretty sharp. I just went medium fine. I didn't need the coarse. And even with the, the medium stone, I can feel it's got a pretty good edge. So same thing. Except for now, for me, I want to go one side then the other. Because I'm trying to get rid of that burr. And I want them as, each side as even as possible. Now that's a sharp edge. Now this edge, after using that fine stone, is perfectly acceptable right now. I can carry this to the kitchen, out in the field, it doesn't matter. This is a sharp knife. But to put that last finishing touch on there, to get it really, really sharp, I'm going to use a leather strop. Okay. And in my case, because again, I do woodworking, I've actually got a special compound here. It's a jeweler's compound, I believe, but it's just for polishing. And that's what I want to do is I just want to polish that bevel. So I'm going to put some on this leather strip. This is called charging it. Doesn't take much and it lasts forever, but you don't have to go this route. If this is just for kitchen knives, a leather bell on the countertop will work. Now I want to take the knife. And I don't want quite as steep of an angle. And all we're doing is just polishing that edge and just getting rid of that last little bit of burr that you can't even see. That's, that's a good sharp edge right there. Now you can keep going even further with the strop. 
and polish it even more. But I, I think that'll work. We can call this good. Okay, now, okay, I've got a just a super sharp edge here. Now we need to maintain this edge. And this is the easy part. And those of you in the kitchen, you're, you're really going to appreciate this one. This is my kitchen knife right here. This is a butcher steel. A butcher steel really doesn't sharpen a knife. It, what it does is when your edge gets a little dull, you touch it up with this and it just straightens out that edge. Well, you can maintain a knife for a really long time with a good butcher steel. I haven't sharpened my kitchen knife in, I don't know, six months, a year. And this gets used daily. And it's the same way with, with the butcher steels, getting that angle right. Where most people mess up is they get too steep with the butcher steel. If you're hitting it with the butcher steel, because you're actually not removing steel, if, don't worry about being too shallow on your angle. You're not going to grind the corner off because you're not removing steel. If you, if you hit it four or five times each side and you can't feel a difference in your edge, you're on the corner. You just bring that angle up just a little bit, hit it a few more times, and then go back and check. We're good. That's how you sharpen a knife. And then that's a good butcher steel. That's how you maintain it. It's going to take you a couple of times to really get this. It's going to be awkward to start with. That's okay though. Just go do it. You'll figure it out after a couple of times. And as soon as you can put a sharp edge on a knife, again, it's going to help you in ways that you just can't even imagine. Even if it's just opening an Amazon package. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give the video a thumbs up. And if you want to see whatever we're doing in the future, I have no idea what it's going to be, but I know deer season is getting close. So it's probably going to be related somehow. Hit subscribe and the notification bell. God bless and have a good day.